comes like, back up. Oh my f oh, I'm saying. Jesus Christ, it's like living with Martin's f***ing scores case. <laughs> What were you trying to Shut say? Up. Martin Scorsese. Why is it like living with him? Oh my god, Liz. Is he like Liz. OCD? Liz! Shh. I don't get it. Because he's a he's a film director. Oh. <laughs> Why are we making this video? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz, but you know me as the Disney historian. And today with my boyfriend, Alex, we are going to be telling you all about the most controversial Disney film, Song of the South. So first off, little disclaimer here. We obviously don't understand the struggles that black culture has faced by the release of this film and by history in general. We are just trying to relay the history related to this film. My job as a Disney historian is to look at exactly that, the history of films in Disney or things that have happened in Disney. And as racist and horrible as this <laughs> film was, it's still a big part of Disney's history. So please bear with us. We are trying to be as historically and politically correct as we can be because we don't want Want to misrepresent people who have been historically misrepresented. Song of the South was a live action and animated film produced in 1946. It was produced by Walt Disney and it was released by RKO Radio Pictures. This story is based on a collection of Uncle Remus stories adapted by Joel Chandler Harris. This takes place in the southern U.S. during the Reconstruction Era, shortly after the Civil War and the abolition of slavery. The story follows a seven-year-old boy, Johnny, visiting his grandmother's plantation. He befriends one of the workers who works on the plantation named Uncle Remus, who tells them stories about the adventures of Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear. Johnny uses these stories to cope with challenges of living on the plantation. So Walt had wanted to produce a film about the Uncle Remus tales for quite some time. I always felt that Uncle Remus should be played by a living person. Several tests in previous pictures, especially in The Three Caballeros, were encouraging in the way living action and animation could be dovetailed. Walt negotiated the film rights with the Harris family in 1939 and began filming in 1944 in Phoenix, Arizona. Walt visited the Harris's family home in Atlanta, Georgia in November of 1940 because he wanted to get an authentic feel of the Uncle Remus country so we can do as faithful a job as possible Possible to these stories. So as Alex mentioned before, this film was a mixture of live action and animation, and it was the very first live action film that Walt Disney Studios had ever created. While the film is mostly live action, there are three animated segments for a total of 25 minutes, and some scenes are even a combination of both live action and animation, like Zippity Doo Dah and the very end mm -hmm. of the film. Animated segments were directed by Wilfred Jackson, and the live action segments were directed by Harvey Foster. Although the film was never released on home video, which we'll talk more about later, the animated segments were later released as standalone television features. James Baskett, who voices Uncle Remus, actually responded to an ad to voice a talking butterfly in this film. Walt wanted to meet him personally and had him tested for the role of Uncle Remus. He ended up voicing the butterfly, Br'er Fox, and Uncle Remus. Walt had told his sister Ruth that Baskett was the best actor, I believe, to be discovered in years. Walt and Basket maintained contact after the film was released, and after Basket died, his widow wrote to Walt that he had been a friend indeed, and we certainly have been in need. So the budget for this movie was about $1,350,000. Walt's brother Roy worried that the film wasn't big enough in caliber and natural draft to warrant a budget of over a million dollars. That should have been your first clue! <laughs> the studio constructed a plantation set in Phoenix, Arizona. That's your second sign. First time was the budget, second time was the plantation you're building? Other scenes were shot in Hollywood at the Samuel Goldwyn studio. So here's a fun little tidbit of information, a little factoid for you. Zippity Doodah had not been properly blocked and they realized this on the last day of shooting. Jackson said, we all sat there in a circle with the dollars running out and nobody came up with anything. Then Walt suggested that they shoot basket in close up cover the lights with cardboard, save for a sliver of blue sky behind his head, and then remove the cardboard from the lights when he began singing so that he would seem to be entering a bright new world of animation. The Song of the South premiered in Atlanta at the Fox Theater on November 12th, 1946. The theatrical run was a financial success though. It grossed over $3.3 million at the box office and Zippity Doo Dah won the 1947 Academy Award for Best Original Song. James Baskett, who played Uncle Remus, received an honorary Academy Award for his performance. Walt campaigned for this, saying he worked almost wholly without direction and devised the character of Remus himself. 
uh, James Basket was actually not able to attend the premiere. Really? Yes, he was not able to get a hotel room, so he was not able to attend the premiere, which everybody was obviously very upset about. That's really awful. That's really <laughs> awful. That's just like, yeah. Wow. Okay. Walt actually didn't stay to watch the film be premiered. He made his introductory remarks and introduced the cast, then left quietly for his room at the Georgian Terrace Hotel across the street. Now, there are a couple of different opinions about why Walt left. It was very well known that Walt would become very upset right. about negative audience reactions or unexpected audience reactions, so the best way for him to avoid that was to just not go. But after looking at some of the things which caused this, this film to be controversial, it leaves you wondering if maybe he had a feeling yeah, that like, this was not going to be well, well accepted, yeah. well perceived, yeah. right? So. I don't know. I'd say that would be strike number three as far as maybe this is maybe a problem. Maybe it's a little racist. This film was re-released five times in theaters, all by Buena Vista Pictures. First in 1956 for the 10th anniversary. Next in 1972 for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney Productions. Next in 1973 as the second half of a double bill for the Aristocats, which is our favorite movie. Yeah. Next in 1980 for the 100th anniversary of Harris's classic stories. And then in 1986 for the film's 40th anniversary and the promotion for the upcoming Splash Mountain at Disneyland. So... Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this oh, video, boy. which are the issues with Song of the South. There are so many problems with this film. So let's back it up to before the film was even released. <laughs> Dalton Raymond was chosen to write the script for the film. Raymond was a southern born writer and known as an Uncle Tom, which gives mm. you a great idea of him. Mm. Walt feared that Raymond's writing would be perceived as white southern slant in his own words, mm. so to counter this, he hired Maurice Rapp, who was writing live action films at the time. In his biography about Walt Disney, titled Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Animation, Neil Gabler wrote, Rapp was a minority, a Jew, and an outspoken left winger, and he himself feared that the film would be inevitably Uncle Tom-ish. That's exactly why I want you to work on it, Walt told him, because I know that you don't think I should make the movie. You're against Uncle Tomism and you're a radical. Here's the thing, he literally hired another person to come in to make it less racist. Well, okay, what I don't understand is like, why would you choose an Uncle Tom to write, write this a, film? Right, exactly. Like, like he wouldn't need somebody to counter that if, if he hadn't he chosen yeah, Uncle Tom to write the chose. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another issue before the film was even released came from Disney publicist Vern Caldwell. He wrote to one of the producers, the Negro situation is a dangerous one. Between the Negro haters and the Negro lovers, there are many chances to run afoul of situations that could run the gamut all the way from the nasty to the controversial. One of the reasons why this film faced so much scrutiny was for the portrayal of African Americans it was just really racist and offensive and it really kind of depicted slave life as something that people were happy, were happy about. They're singing and dancing, and it was just awkward. Cultural historian Jason Spurb describes it as one of Hollywood's most resiliently offensive racist texts. Time Magazine said the film was bound to land its maker in hot water because Uncle Remus was bound to enrage all educated Negroes and a number of damn Yankees. Adam Clayton Powell Jr., congressman from Harlem, branded the film as an insult to American minorities and everything that America as a whole stands for. Let that sink in. People are literally saying that this is one of the most awful depictions of what slavery actually looked like. Now, another one of the more racially motivated things that went on in the movie is the depiction of the black vernacular. It was very, very stereotypically slave-like. A lot of like spirituals being sung about freedom. Norma Jensen, a staff member at the NAACP, wrote that the film was so artistically beautiful that it is difficult to be provoked over the cliches, but it contained all of the cliches in the book. Mentioning she felt scenes like black singing traditional black songs were offensive as a stereotype. For me, it's interesting doing research into this, how many people told them this was a bad idea. Yeah. The underlying theme has a kind of cool message to it, but the way they're depicting the characters, and they never outwardly say we're depicting this during slave times. Well, that's one of the other big issues. So this film was supposed to be taking place, as we said in the beginning, during the Reconstruction era of the South, which would be about 1870 on. The problem with this is that there is never any any, you know, blurb or something that comes up that says, go oh, November 1870, like right. nothing along those lines. The only hint about when this film could 
possibly take place is the clothes that Johnny and his mom and his grandmother wear. Experts have seen this as, you know, oh, obviously this is, you know, it's late Victorian style, which was what people tended to wear in the 1870s. But besides that, us laymen are watching the film and seeing slaves, a plantation, people who look like they're better off than other people. There's clear points in the movie where you see a hierarchy in the people that are in the movie that implied slave culture without basically saying that it's a, it, they live on a plantation, they demean the characters. There's a part where Uncle Remus, they tell him to leave because he's getting the kids to like imagine and like think, think of all these characters and stories. Everything in it makes you think that it's about slavery, but they never just outwardly say it, which is where Disney runs into an issue because people don't want you to depict things by using stereotypes that are offensive. The bigger issue is that they never utter the word slave or slaves or anything along those lines, which is a problem because they never say, oh, I'm not a slave or oh, well, we used to be slaves. They never, ever, ever say anything about it. So basically what that does is create almost like a dystopic plantation where African Americans are working for white people and they're happy about it and everything's fine. And that's just the way that things are. That's, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And the plantation setting in and of itself is criticized because of the fact that it's idealized and glorified. It's just put into a light that makes it seem like it was something that it wasn't. I think that the NAACP put it the best. They put a statement out after the film was released where they said, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People recognizes in Song of the South remarkable artistic merit in the music and in the combination of living actors and the cartoon technique. It recognizes, however, that in an effort neither to offend audiences in the North or South, the production helps to perpetuate a dangerously glorified picture of slavery. Making use of the beautiful Uncle Remus folklore, Song of the South unfortunately gives the impression of an idyllic master-slave relationship which is a distortion of the facts. I think this is fascinating and a perfect way to think of it. Slavery, as we all know, was hands down the worst thing to ever happen in this country. Hands down. There's nothing that can compare to it. So taking that and changing it to be happy and to say, oh no, 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 the slaves were fine, everything was great, is incredibly offensive and demeaning to the people who suffered during slavery, who are suffering when the movie came out from segregation, who are suffering now from still a lot of prejudice. It's interesting though, too, when you think about it, is the time in which this was released. We had a lot of African Americans fighting in World War II. This film came out right while the Double V campaign was huge in the United States, which was the idea that the African Americans who were fighting overseas for our country would, one, help defeat fascism overseas, and two, would come home and would help defeat segregation on home soil. And here's the thing, the storyline is beautiful. It really depicts an awesome, not seeing color, seeing somebody who wants to tell you these stories and who you love because in the movie, his father leaves. He has no father figure. So he finds a father figure in the, in Uncle Remus and they have this relationship that is really, really pure and beautiful. And if it was told in the right context, in the right setting, if it was, it probably would have had a different outcome as far as people's reactions to it. All these things where they're saying like, oh no, 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 it didn't take place during slavery. So then why didn't you say that? Why didn't anybody in the studio have the peace of mind to say, oh wait, we should probably put in here that this takes place during 1870. They, personally, my views on it is that Disney did these stereotypes to make it known to people that they were trying to make a statement on colorblindness, yeah. but it got so misconstrued because it's really, really, really stereotypically offensive. So as Alex mentioned before, there were a ton of protests when this film came out. There were protests in big cities by the National Negro Congress. There were picket lines set up at theaters that the film was playing at with signs that said, Song of the South is an insult to the Negro people. And they were chanting, Disney tells, Disney tells lies about the South to the tune of Jingle Bells. On April 2nd of 1947, there was a protest at the Paramount Theater in Oakland, California, with signs that said, we want films on democracy, not slavery, and don't prejudice children's minds with films like this. So Disney obviously took a lot of heat. For this reason, Disney has yet to release Song of the South on home video in the United States. They have, however, released it on home video in other countries. Which I don't and know. And also the, the shorts, the cartoon shorts, which the Splash Mountain ride is based off of, you can still find those. They Those have been released. In March 2010, CEO Bob Iger said that there were no plans to release the movie on DVD because it was antiquated and fairly offensive. In November of 2010, creative director Dave Bossert said, I can see there's a lot of internal discussion about Song of the South. 
and at some point we're going to do something about it. I don't know when, but we will. We know we want people to see Song of the South because it's a big piece of our company's history and we want to do it the right way. What this does for Disney by having this film released, it shows how far Disney has come as a company. They think about how other people are going to perceive these. Like they, they are much more in depth at how they portray other cultures. Contemporary Disney movies have a lot more friendly depictions of other cultures. For instance, Coco, Moana, Princess and the Frog. This kind of shows that contrast of like Disney when they were first starting out and their first attempts to where they are now. So in July of 2017, Whoopi Goldberg actually came out and expressed a desire for Song of the South to be re-released publicly to American audiences after her Disney Legends inauguration. The animation scenes do not really help too much either. The stories all relate to Br'er Rabbit wanting to run away from home, but the moral of the story is that you can't avoid trouble and there's no place like home. Now, let's put this in perspective of the film. So the main character wants to run away and eventually learns that there's no place like home and you can't run away from your problems. There's also a scene where Rare Rabbit gets stuck in a tar baby which in the film it's a baby that's just made of tar because it's sticky and Br'er Fox wants to like get him so he can eat him so he captures him like that but tar baby was a very offensive term used about African Americans. So like mm -hmm. Mm. Because slave culture being depicted as happy is not enough. We're gonna put a racial slur in there. So I bet you all are wondering, does Disney still make money off of this film? Well, of course not. If they're not releasing it on home video, they can't still be making money off of the film. Actually... You all know of the ride at Disney called Splash Mountain. Well, that's based off of this film. It's based off of the cartoon from this film, but still, come on Disney, you're making money off of this still. Obviously Disney doesn't make money off of one particular ride because Disney is not a ticketed event where you, you get tickets for to go on a ride in particular, but they're making merchandise. There's plush animals of Rare Rabbit, Rare Fox, Rare Bear. Disney is coming out with all of these spirit jerseys about particular rides. There's Haunted Mansion ones, there's Enchanted Tiki Room ones, there's It's a Small World ones, and they're gonna be coming out with Splash Mountain ones. So that's still revenue from this film that they're trying to hide from the and entire world. And that's the world. thing. If you have one of the most famous rides from your park be based off of a movie that you're trying to deny, that's kind of messed up, Disney. It's interesting because Disney works so hard to hide this film like from public view, but it's kind of difficult to hide a giant mountain that everybody flocks to when they get into the Magic it's Kingdom. It's almost like a monument. I didn't even think of that! So our friend Sakai is here to give his two cents on this, on this wonderfully executed, failed. just kidding, this, <laughs> this failure of a racist film. Yes. Here Welcome Sakai. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Oh, yada yada yada. yada, yada. Uh, time. Jesus, I'm yep. bald thing. when you guys met me. I didn't have any hair on my head. I'm still bald. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. Sakai. Mm -hmm. We've talked a whole bunch in this video about the blatant disregard for history and mm -hmm. what is appropriate and yeah. um, you know, <laughs> yeah. just so politically correctness. So, what do you think? So, I feel a lot of feelings. <laughs> I actually didn't even know this movie existed. I'd only known that, like the song Zippity Doo Dah, um, mm -hmm. but like everyone knows that. Here's my thing about it. Like I, I understand why people are against it, and I 100% would be like, how was that? Yeah. You know. Um, and like if that movie were released today, I would be very bothered. Here's the thing. It just is a mirror of what American society is used to doing. Whitewashing and sugarcoating yeah. are shitty history, you know? Yeah. Well, that's one thing we're good at. History books, everything we know, everything that we know is popular modern Western history in the Americas is extremely sugarcoated and whitewashed to make white people look decent. To make them look like they're less at fault. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, so that's one issue that I have. I can't really be mad at the black actresses and actors in the film. For a very long time before that, African Americans weren't even allowed to play themselves, you know? True. True. And then when they were, they weren't smart, they were, you know, lesser. And I mean, it, it still has the same motifs. Right, right. But it's portrayed in a different light, you know? Like, okay, Uncle yeah. Remus is the good guy in this mm -hmm. situation, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's very true. You know? And so, 
for a film made in what the 1940s, 1940s. early 1940s. Yep. So after films like Birth of a Nation had been yeah, out yeah, and yeah. extremely popular, I can't be mad at them for taking up on this opportunity to at least humanize black people even remotely. You know, yeah, it's a weird position to be in as an actor in that film. You know, because the, the other thing is that you know you got to feed your kids. You got to feed your children. I was just going to say that. You know, yeah. you know, and when it comes down to it, like there, that's it's a real thing that people think about have to think about you know and so that's just the thing that i think about like as for the actors in that position right right you right. know they have jobs they have dreams they have you know standard needs that they need to fulfill you know? right right so in terms of the film being <laughs> i hate that is you that is incredible in terms of the film mm -hmm. being released because mm -hmm. you know it's never been, been released, released in the United States. Right. Do you think it should be or should it not be released? I think if Disney releases it they should release it to uh, the public domain. They can't make money off of it except for maybe licensing rights for Zippity right. Duda. And I think if, if Disney is as good hearted as they claim to be they don't want to like release it as something that was so great one and people will be like you're just trying to make money off of this right and it's not okay and it never really was right. okay right i think that's the issue disney is like battling with i would like to believe it's not a you know i'm trying to cover up the racist past we have i think that's good that you can see disney's like growth yes you know yeah um and i think we definitely become way more diverse and way more mm -hmm. inclusive yeah. I think if Disney were like really 100, they'd be like, you know, this is a problem that America has. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And like. With their power and Right. Oh my Disney God. Disney is. They, yes. They are so. so right. They can definitely make some sort of impact. Big statement. Right. Big, yeah, yeah. And so I feel like if they were like, the rest of America needs to follow our lead and, you know, mm. own up to the fact, you know, be accountable, if you will for their past, you know? Right, it says and something. Like, it says something about the character of Disney as a company, and you know, the and people who And it says something to so the future, forth. like, Disney's main audience obviously is kids. kids and yeah. kids are well, so impressionable. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting how Disney, just by owning up to their fault and, mm -hmm. and being like, okay, we did this, and we're not gonna try and hide it, like, it's out in the open here. Right, if they right. accept it, and they show that they can accept things, mm -hmm. and like, it sends a message to those like children that are watching these right. things and being like, like, wow, this is like, I want to be like Disney. And yeah. The world changes. <laughs> <laughs> I would also talk about like, you know, black history pre-slavery. Because that's another thing that we don't really recognize. We fail to realize that like, Black African people, people that's true. Black people existed before slavery and we were not just in huts, you know, in dancing in grass skirts. Like we, gave the world culture. Europe before the Moors and before African influence did not have like written language and all the castles and so forth that are famous because of European monarchy we had in like Ethiopia. Right, first, right, right, you know? right. Black history is more than just slavery forward. It's world history. It could be. So don't spend your time worrying about, fig you know, figure. we figured it out for you. Don't like, worry. Hire us. Yes. Hire Perfect. us. All three of us yes. and we'll do it for you. We got you. We got, we got you. you. Also, my song Daydreaming and Disrespect out now. I have a Christmas single coming out on Thanksgiving Day. It's called By My Side. It's going to be, it's mad cute or whatever, you know, it's like, it's coming out. Check it out. Check it out. It's on, uh, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere where you can buy stream music, it's there, so. I will put the link to Sakai's two singles, Daydreaming yes. and Disrespect, in yes. the bio Ooh. down there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed, <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh this my is fun. god, I'm I so appreciate happy it. You came. You're the best. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much to Sakai thank and you, to thank Alex you. for popping in. Yeah, if thank you me. guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and mm -hmm. give this video a thumbs up. Spread the love. Spread the love. Peace and love. We would love to know what you guys think in the comments. Let us know if you think that Song of the South should be released or not. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep watching for more fun Disney stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Wow. Yeah, as much as really it. good. Wow. <laughs> I'm not vain. <laughs> <laughs> so.